if you're brand new to shooting, you should only be shooting ammunition that is correctly marked, that's purchased from a known manufacturer, that's safe and reliable through your gun. Yes, big uh, side note on that. Um, the big funny thing when it comes to public ranges is you will always get some guy with reloads. Never shoot someone else's reloads. Welcome to our Never Owned a Gun series, where we break down and explain concepts of firearm usage and ownership to people who have never owned a gun. We use positive, family-friendly language so that we can come together as a community and help spread firearms awareness and to help usher in a new community of safe and informed gun owners. Hosted by Insurgency Knitting Circle, Uncensored Tactical, and others in the firearms community. Enjoy. Thank you so much for checking out another episode of Uncensored Tactical. This is the NOAG series, the Never Owned a Gun series. This one is brought to you by some of our recent Patreon subscribers. We have Matt H, we have Justin C, we have Chad R, and Josh 75. So thank you so much to you guys for helping to make sure that this show continues to bring content. And let me give a, just a little bit of background for today's show. This is going to be on calibers, millimeters, and gauges, basically the uh, sizes and types of ammunition, just a very basic intro for it. Uh, disclaimer. So this is a series episode. This episode is going to have safe for work or family safe language and concepts. Uh, the other episodes on Uncensored Tactical are not necessarily uh, family safe, so be, be aware of that. Uh, as with every episode... I may be wrong, and I reserve the right to be wrong. However, uh, that's good news. One is you get to use your actual noodle up there in your brain, and you get to decide which information is correct. You get to do your own research and your own homework, and you get to weigh all of this information. Uh, the other part is I would be happy to be corrected. I've already been corrected a few times, especially on this Never Owned a Gun series, and I'm fine with that. So that's part of the learning process for me and for you. Uh, another important part that's important for not only this series, but a lot of other content and a lot of other training too, is that sometimes in order to get people started in a specialty, you kind of have to lie in the beginning to get moving. And it's not a lie with a negative weight to it. It's more of, uh, more of speaking more generally or using bigger terms and then worrying about exceptions later is usually one of the best um, explanations of that. So, uh, we're going to just get you started today. I have a guest with me here. I have Mr. Mr. T-Rex from the T-Rex blog. Let's go ahead and get your, uh, whatever name you want to be called by. I don't know if you use your first name or your blog name, but let's do your plugs and let's, uh, introduce yourself. All right. Uh, well, you can find me on, uh, Twitter at gun shenanigans. And if you go to my Twitter page right there is a link to my blog, um, my first name is Dave. I have no problem admitting to that one. Um, just make life easier for everyone to use my real name, use my first name, like we call you Pat. Um, spent some time in the Marines, got out, uh, got kind of tied into the whole 3% militia movement thing. Um, went to college while doing it at the same time. Uh, kind of realized that that was a bit of a joke, and then... Uh, funny enough, I was actually in one of their chat rooms still because I communicate people to maintain my relationships. And um, someone actually posted your podcast. It was your episode on Boogaloo Tactics. Oh. And that kind of just that just led me down the rabbit hole, if you want to call it that. And that's uh -huh. kind of how I got here today. Super. So let's jump into the content as quick as we can. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to start with the three main major different types of ammunitions or different families of ammunitions, I guess you can call them. So you have, for the most part, you have pistol ammo, you have rifle ammo, and you have shotgun ammo. So for the brand new beginner, I wouldn't go any farther than that. Uh, no, that's pretty much all you would really have to, for any realistic application, that's all you're really going to have to focus on anyways. And if you were brand new to shooting, which this series is, is designed for, if you were going into a, a gun store and you were buying anything other than those three things, I would be a little concerned and I would say, well, let's make sure we're on a firm ground and we're a, f a firm understanding of what you're looking for. So, and even, yeah. And even then you can, you know, depending on what you're getting, you could end up even down a rabbit hole there yourself. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, especially with rifle ammunition, it gets it turns into a labyrinth. So let's start with something real simple. I recommend for your first gun, people buy a pistol, uh, but you do you. Uh, but for this episode, we're going to jump into that first. Usually, pistol ammo is referred to in two ways, either by their caliber size or their millimeter size. Um, most commonly, and you'll call that, uh, of course, we don't we don't just call it a bullet. So the whole thing, the bullet with the casing and the powder and the primer, that's called your, your round, one round of ammunition. Uh, so, arguably, let me see what you think about this, Dave. Arguably, three of the most common types of pistol size ammunition you have nine millimeter you have your 45 cal and you have your 22 i'd say those are three of of the biggest yeah if i was to just throw another one in there it's it's very much a dying off round now mm-hmm. thankfully but uh, there were still some people who are they're still I, I guess you can call them the fud end of the community uh they're still very much hanging on to 40 caliber mm-hmm. 40 cal is also common especially um with a lot of semi-auto pistols I don't know too many revolvers that shoot a forty cal. Do you? Uh, no, the only in terms of the the modern semi-automatic calibers, I think the only one that's used are uh, you have a couple of revolvers that will run nine millimeter, and you have a couple that will run forty five ACP. Um, the big thing why that would be those are issues. Um, revolver calibers are on what they call a rim uh, rimmed cartridge, so they have like that little lip on the bottom. Mm-hmm. Um, and semi and semi-automatic handgun ammo is rimless, mm-hmm. kind of like a modern rifle ammo, and you need rims in order to properly see it in a cylinder of a revolver. Um, you can get other doodads like moon clips and other weird things, but they're not always the best. So most revolver calibers, um, well, most modern calibers that we uh, mentioned, with the exception of twenty two, because that does have a rim on it, you will not see in most revolvers most revolver calibers are um 38 special 357 magnum and you'll still have some guys running 44 magnum and it gets up and convoluted and crazier from there because they kind of just see it's turned into an exercise of how big can we make this okay i have a sneaky suspicion there might be some people if you're listening because you're brand new to gun ownership or have never done it uh let's start real small so one of the most common rounds period in the u.s in modern day is your nine millimeter round so you'll notice i said millimeter at the end you might have heard the term caliber at the end too or cal so your nine millimeter round is measured at the the width of the inside of the barrel or they call that the diameter right or the width of the bullet or the diameter of the bullet that's just nine millimeters across um your bigger bullet after that it's just a fatter, wider, heavier bullet is your 45 cal, and that's 0.45 of an inch. Am I correct on that, Dave? I believe you are, yes. Your calibers are, are point number number, and it's how much of an inch that takes up. Uh, your 22 is 0.22 of an inch. Am I correct on that, too? Yes. Okay. So that's your, your sizing from tiny bullet would be your, your 22 round. Medium-sized bullet would be a 9 millimeter, and your large bullet for a pistol would be a 45 cal. And, of course, there are some things that you're going to have to worry about for your type of gun, too, because there's your 45 GAP round, your 45 um, ACP round, and was it is it Colt 45? Um, Colt 45 is more the revolver caliber. Um but the, you have forty. You you have it, it's gotten a little bit more co- uh, confusing nowadays. You do have forty five gap, which is a uh, Glock proprietary cartridge. Um, funny enough, uh, me uh, me in New York, uh, are the New York State Police actually run a Glock chambered in forty five gap. And um, I used to work security, and we had state troopers there for weird reasons. Um, and they were telling me how they always found it to be uh, a severe pain in the butt to get a hold of 45 gap because it's such a boutique cartridge, if you want to call it that. Cool. So let's do a little, um, value for the listeners. So if you're brand new or you're just getting started or you haven't gotten started yet, but you're gonna, what, what would one of the benefits be to choosing one of these very common rounds? Well, I think we can even see that with current events today. If you're choosing a round that's very hard to find. It's probably more expensive. It's also harder to find. 
So choosing one of the common rounds will usually save you a little money. It'll usually save you a little time and stress when you're trying to find rounds to put into your gun. How do you feel about that? Uh, yes, absolutely. Like I, I tell people don't bother getting like, you know, there's all these crazy calibers that are coming out now and, I'm like, don't don't bother with those because one, the ammo is expensive. I mean, nine millimeter, give or take, depending on which load you're using, uh, is under fifty cents a round. And even right now, with the uh, the ammo shortage that we're having, it's still around uh, under fifty cents a round. <clears throat> um, other ca- other cartridges can be you know a dollar twenty five a round, and th- when you're buying lots of a thousand rounds, that's a pretty big difference in price mm-hmm. um same time with some of these newer cal- uh, cartridges or newer guns they like they just you know glock just came out with a, a gun chambered in uh, 22 lr because mm-hmm. that's you know the cheap training shooter but they're the guns are cracking because they're made entirely out of polymer <laughs> okay um and that was the same thing when when the glock first came out with the 40 caliber pistol because 40 is a um very high pressure cartridge um the guns were blowing up in people's hands. So especially if it's something new, you'd want to stay away from because right now they probably haven't worked out all the R&D properly because they haven't had them mass produced and out in the mass market yet. That's another good point. It is, if you're just getting started, it it probably is in your best interest to buy a gun that's been out for about a year or so at least. Yes, yeah, so even, and even if you are a, a, a regular shooter, uh, you know, because Glock every five years comes out with a new generation model. I'd wait a year or two before you decide to upgrade to that new model, because when the Gen 4s came out, the they had severe issues in terms of reliability. Mm-hmm. Those got fixed, or even recently the the Sig P320. They're not drop safe. They just found that out like a year ago, and you know that was the, the hot thing on the market because the Army just selected that as their new handgun. So I would definitely say do your research and wait some time because a new gun is bound to have issues within the first six months to a year of it being on the market. A lot of good info. And that is, unfortunately, that is common in the gun market for guns to have problems upon their initial release. Okay, let's move into rifle ammo. I only selected two variations of rifle ammo or two sizes of rifle ammo. Each size has a counterpart a military and a civilian counterpart that are slightly different, but similar enough that in, in common language, you can kind of use both terms. So if you're confused, let me try again. So there's a smaller rifle ammunition round, smaller round of rifle ammo. Um, it's got two different variations that are very close, very similar. There's a bigger round. It's got two names and two sizes that are like really, really similar. Let's do just one. There's probably in the U.S. the most common rifle round is your what they call 223 or 556. One of them is listed in um, caliber, and one of them is listed in millimeter. Am I correct on that? Yes. Okay. Your .223 is .223 of an inch. So that that's the fraction of an inch of the size of the the width of the bullet or the size of the barrel. Your 5.56. Is 5.56 millimeters across. Am I right on that? Uh, yeah, you should be. I mean, I'm sure there might be some minuscule micrometer checking variation there. Um, in terms of 223 and 556, uh, dimensionally, I think there's like a slight, slight, slight variation, but not enough to really notice, like even inside the gun. The big difference is in the, uh, the amount of powder in the card in the the in the shell and it results in the um the actual pressures and the velocities of the bullet. Um uh, five five six is a much higher velocity round than two twenty three is. So there is there is some information you would have to be aware of between the two. Uh one of the biggest ones that I'm familiar with, and I'm sure we're gonna get lots and lots of feedback by people that are very deep in the gun world, but for the beginner Whatever your rifle is purchased in, that it'll usually tell you on the tag. It'll say you're purchasing a rifle that uses .223 ammunition. Just stick with that. Um, in the military, they often use 5.56. And the rounds are usually handed to you in the military. It's not really a hard decision you have to make about what to put in your gun. 
uh, the civilian market, usually you'll, if you call it the right ammo, they'll usually hand you the right ammo. So just, just be aware. Yeah. Um, if it doesn't say on the, it might say it on the tag, but to double check, look at the barrel on the barrel. It will be stamped either two, two, three Remington or 5.56 NATO. Mm-hmm. And to make life easier for everyone, Buy one that's stamped in 5.56. You think so? Because, yes, because if you put, you could put 223 into a 556 chamber and barrel and no problem. If you put 556 into a 223 chamber and barrel, you run the risk of catastrophic failures and potentially having the gun blow up in your face. Um, I haven't seen it happen, but I mean, you're talking about a chamber that's not built up for that higher chamber pressure of that higher pressure of that round. So it's likely to have some sort of very dangerous failure and it's just safer to not take the risk. Um, There is one caveat to that and you will find it more on um, the higher end AR 15s on the market, but you'll also see it in um, Palmetto state armory AR 15s, which are not known for being high of quality Um, two, two, three wild. That is completely okay. Um, two, two, three wild is really nothing more than a five, five, six. They just kind of, it's more like a, it's a beefed up two, two, three for competition use or something like that. It's, I'm not hundred percent sure on the whole difference in reasoning behind it, but that chamber is built up to take the five, five, six cartridge. So if you have a two, two, three wild barrel or a 5.56 barrel, you are good to go in that situation. Okay. So here's a, a word of advice for the beginner. You could do a lot of research, do a lot of gun shop talking, although they might not be the the most honest or accurate. Do your own internet research. I'm looking at an article right now from Wikipedia that reads like it's a college term paper. It's a lot of numbers, a lot of history. Um, And even in the article that I'm reading right now on just Wikipedia for 5.56 ammo, it does say there is widespread confusion on the topic. So just be careful what you buy and put the right ammo in if you can. And also, just like we said in disclaimer in the beginning, we reserve the right to be incorrect, but we're trying our best to get you started with some basic info. Let's move on to the next round. You have a larger round for ammo for your rifles, which is, people call it the 308, and very similar is your 762. You want to talk about those a little bit? We'll get we'll get us started. Uh, yeah, that can... Um it's kind of like the what I said with the 556 five, and 223. This situation is actually the reverse. Um, 762 NATO ammo can feed into a 308 gun, but not the other way around. And it has something to do with like a headspace and timing issue, but you can still get the same catastrophic results. Um, that is a much heavier, um, much more, uh, yeah, you could say more expensive. It, I've usually, where I am, I usually see it at about a dollar around. Um, and it can get pretty confusing too because you have, um, Certain cartridges are built more for hunting, some for targets, some for semi-automatic use, some for bolt gun use. It's, you know, it can get confusing and run the gamut. Um, if you're in the market for a 308, I would highly suggest you start with a bolt gun because you're going to spend a whole lot less money. And you're, you know, even with the, the bad batch of Remington 700s that are on the market... Um, you're more than likely going to get a high quality weapon that is going to work. Um, 308 semi automatics are uh, a lot more expensive, some uh, way a lot more expensive, and they're, uh, you don't really see them a whole lot out in the, um, at least where I am, naturally, because we my state sucks. But um, they're much more expensive on the market, and they're not as, there's not as many high quality 308 semi automatic rifles without spending around three grand. So the takeaway for the beginner, we have two two main sizes of ammo for your rifles. You have the smaller one and the kind of medium-sized one. Each of those has a kind of a sister round that's really similar. You need to use some caution when you're buying your rifle and you're feeding it with certain types of ammunition. Uh, one of the biggest factors for that is going to be price. I like to. I don't know anyone that teaches uh, gun, gun uh, armed lifestyles for short term. Um, So for everyone I talk to, this is a long-term, lifelong lifestyle. You have time to buy a gun that's a little bit less expensive, that uses ammo that's more common, and ammo that's a little less expensive to get you started. 
I would usually recommend that to brand new shooters. I would say choose a common ammo that's not crazy expensive for a gun that's not crazy expensive and get started and start learning and start doing. So I'm usually happy with that. Yeah, um, I'm surprised that you didn't mention because a lot of people, especially in the, um, I guess you call it the Bouja Hadeen circles, mm-hmm. um, are big in AKs. So I'm surprised we didn't get into 762 by 39 or, um, seven, or 545 by 39. I figured. Um, I, I just want people to get really just basic to get started to know if I buy a rifle, how do I do step one at the gun shop? All right. Fair enough. Uh, last thing I have here is shotguns and shotguns are usually measured in your, your gauge is the size of the barrel or the size of the ammo that goes in the barrel. Um, the most common in the U S is easily your 12 gauge shotgun. And, and even if you're not in the gun market, you, you probably are familiar with that from just uh, pop culture, right? Go grab the 12 gauge. That's your shotgun. It's just, it's crazy common. Uh, that has to do with the diameter of the barrel and uh, the weight or how many uh, spheres of metal. I think it's lead. I can't remember the type of metal, but a solid sphere of metal inside that size diameter of the barrel and how many of those make up one pound. I think it was is what tells you your gauge. Uh, but to keep it super simple, 12 gauge is the most common shotgun barrel size and, and ammunition size in the country. And the smaller the gauge, like a 10 gauge is bigger. So your like your 20 gauge is smaller than your 12 gauge. Like they're kind of an inverse relationship. So as the, the digit goes up for your gauge, the size goes down. That's, that should get you started in shotgun stuff. And if you're just getting started with shooting, I don't see a reason why you would buy anything other than a 12 gauge. Um, usually this, the stuff outside of that is your specialty stuff for people that have a really, that are collectors or that just have a ton of money to burn. I mean, this one, this one is just set it and forget it. It's so simple. You go into a gun shop, you, you take a look at all the different 12 gauge shotguns and you go, I like that one the best. Did I say 12 gauge. I think it didn't. Yeah. 12 gauge. <laughs> yeah. You said 12. You're in your um, there. No, uh, for your for your average person, absolutely uh, twelve gauge. Um, if you have someone that's a, a little bit more dainty, or maybe you have a, a lady friend who you're trying to get involved in guns. Um, again, this depends on the person, but uh, you have twenty gauge, which is a much smaller, uh, and then you have even smaller than that. You have four ten gauge. Um, 410 really isn't useful for much. I mean, I know they make a they make a revolver that can actually handle um 410. Mm-hmm. I think it's uh, was it the I know the Taurus one, it's like the um the Judge. It can shoot 45 long colt or uh 410, which it's it's more of a sp- uh, a boutique or a um I guess you can call it a meme gun. A meme gun. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it's just something that someone, someone, you know, out in the back would be like, Hey, look what I can do. Um, yeah, but they do make some, the, the old fashioned lever action shotguns are still chambered in four ten, Um, and then, you know, 20 and then 12 and then it's much harder to find now, but you can still find the ammo for it. But I really don't think anyone makes a shotgun for it anymore is the 10 gauge. Um, and that is a very, very, very stout um, gauge right there. Um, we have here a uh, a single shot shotgun that we uh, it's a ten gauge that we de- nicknamed uh, Thumper. And if you are not careful, the you will shoot that shotgun and it'll pop right out of your hands if you're not holding down tight enough. You know that's another really good point. I am glad you kind of segued off to that. Um, kind of like in the gym, how you don't lift more weight to impress people because you end up hurting yourself. The gun world is the same way. Don't pick a gun because of a cool movie you saw or because the number's really big or because the gun shop guy told you, this is the hardest hitting gun we have. Just purchase something. I highly recommend if you were my mother or my sister or my brother, I would say these are the things you should start with because they're common, because they're safe, because they're reliable, because they're not crazy expensive. I would start with the things we're talking about today. Let me give you a really quick recap of the pistol rifle and pistol rifle and shotgun ammo. And then we're going to move on to another few points. 
the most common types of ammunition for your pistol or your sizes of ammunition is your nine millimeter, your 45 cal and your 22. If you want to be like right down the middle of the line, get your nine millimeter for a round. That's a little, little bit more expensive, but a little bit bigger. That's your 45 cal for your, for your rounds that are very small, but very easy to shoot. That's your small 22. Let's go for rifle ammo really quick. You have your small one that's kind of like your AAA battery size, and you have your bigger one that's kind of a AA battery size. Each one of them has a civilian and a military variation, and they're really, really close, but they're just slightly different, so you got to use some caution. The smaller ones, your AAA battery size, that's going to be your 223 and your 556. And in the gun world, people usually don't say the period or the point in the title, so they don't say, you know, 2.23. They'll just say 223. Your bigger ones, your AA battery size, are going to be your 308 and your 762. And again, one of these is in millimeters, one of these is in caliber. The bigger ones are usually a little more expensive. There's nothing wrong with buying the smaller ones, your 223 or your 556. Shotguns are in gauges, and you really, if you're a beginner, or especially if you've never owned a gun, period, I don't see any reason why you would buy anything other than 12 gauge, unless, like Dave said, unless you're a smaller frame person or it's for your child or it's for a lady who's kind of cautious about getting into guns. You can get her that. Which gauge do you say for that? 20? 20, yeah. 20 gauge. There you go. Okay, so that's our quick recap. Uh, let's move in. Let's talk real quick about magazines. Most modern, I mean, most people, if you've never owned a gun before, they don't purchase their first gun as an antique. Sometimes they might get it handed to them from a loved one, but you don't usually go into the gun shop and say, you know, I've never owned anything. Give me the oldest thing you have that's, you know, made two, 200 years ago. They don't want that. So most of the modern guns, uh, like we talked about earlier, will have a stamp on the gun for the size ammunition it needs. And most magazines, not all, most magazines will have a stamp somewhere on it that says the size of the bullet that needs to go into it. You can sometimes fit a smaller bullet into a bigger caliber gun. Just so think about putting a small peg into a big hole. You often can't put a bigger caliber round into a smaller caliber uh, barrel. So you do need to use some caution. It is common enough that people do it at the gun range on accident. If you have two or three pistols in front of you and two or three different calibers, and if they're similar enough, sometimes people load the wrong one into the wrong magazine and they put it in and they chamber the round and they point and they pull the trigger and they go, oh, that didn't feel right. It's common enough that it happens with, with professionals. It's common enough that it happens with people that have been shooting their whole life. So just use some, uh, use some common sense, double check, especially if you're not in, you know, crazy combat mode. If you're just going to the range, take your time, double check, try and keep your ammo separate. Um, but most newer modern magazines, especially the polymer ones, like the plastic ones will have a stamp on it. that says which ammo specifically goes in that magazine. Any thoughts? Uh, yes. Uh, especially be especially mindful of that nowadays because the, uh, the modern trend, in the uh, the gun world right now is to take modern ammunition and either change the projectile or cut down the shell casing a little bit and stick something new in there. Um, they will, you know, whatever that original base cartridge was, will fit in those magazines still. And in some cases, will even chamber in the weapon still. But uh, because of they're different enough when it, come that, when it comes to that, the moment you pull the trigger, you're definitely going to notice that something is off. That That's a great, great, great safety point, too. I'm really, really glad you said that one, too. I'm, I'm glad I got you on this call. So <laughs> let me write a quick note here. At minute 27. Okay. Um, if you're new to I'm, shooting or if you're in any way unsure, do not shoot ammo through your gun or through anyone else's gun if they, if they say anything outside of general normal standard practice. So if someone reaches in their pocket and goes, hey, I got some rounds for you to try, that's a big red flag. No, thank you. I appreciate it, but no. If you're brand new to shooting, you should only be shooting ammunition that is correctly marked, that's purchased from a known manufacturer, that's safe and reliable through your gun. Yes, big uh, side note on that. Um, the big funny thing when it comes to public ranges is you will always get some guy with reloads. Never shoot someone else's reloads because you don't know what they did to make those reloads. They're not factory made. 
Uh, I know guys who are really good at it, and a lot of competition guys make their own ammo. But unless you did it yourself, don't trust it. That's a great. Or unless, point. if you know the guy personally who does the who does reloads, then maybe. But you get a lot of variation there because some guys are more c- careful about it than others. And uh, you know, as I said, with how they're making new am- new calibers of ammunition are coming out, they're just taking old cartridges and modifying them in some way. Uh, who knows? Maybe that guy at the range with the NRA badge is doing the same thing, doing an experiment in how far can we push this without making a gun go kaboom in my hands. Sounds good. Be very, very careful with the ammo that you put in. Keep it super simple, especially if you're new. And this, this podcast series is designed for people that are new to shooting. So uh, let's move on. Have you, it's been a while since I looked up a gun's um, serial number online. I'm going to go ahead and do a live trial of that real quick. I have my safe direction and unloaded Glock here. I'll do the same thing that, that you're, you mentioned it. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and click pause so we're not listening to some dead time. Give me one second. Okay, so we're off pause. Uh, we, both of us, we th- I haven't done this in a while. I thought it was going to be a super fast lookup. It was not. So there were a bunch of gun forums and dead links and info that was confusing. Uh, so good news, bad news. Good news is your gun should have a serial number on it. If it doesn't, you probably have a problem. Uh, you can take that serial number. You can take photos. There is a huge community that is willing to help you identify your guns and to make you shoot the correct ammo. Um, but... I mean, so the bad news was it was a little confusing. took a lot longer than we both expected. The good news is there is a community that will help you. The other good news is it is stamped in one, two. Uh, it's stamped in two different places that I can see on the outside of my gun with the size of ammunition needs to go in there. And it's very clear. Like, there's no mistaking it. Huge letters. Also, the magazine that I have here certainly says 9mm for my Glock. That makes it really easy. So there are indicators, especially on most modern guns. There is a community that will help you. Your local gun shop, I'm sure, will help you. Make sure you put the right ammo through your gun. Uh, But also, use your own brain. So, there's a little bit more on that. What do we got next? Okay, if you're just starting out, I'm going to keep this real simple. Some guns are picky about which ammo they shoot. Some are not. So, be prepared to experiment. And be prepared to do a little research, and you're going to have to take a little bit of notes. Uh, But the good news, again, in the year 2020, if you're going to the range and you're relatively new to shooting, I would buy two or three different brands and types of ammunition, which we're going to get into in a minute. I would take those boxes. I'd line them up. I'd take a photo of the box. I'd then load a bunch of rounds into my magazine, shoot them, and I would notice, okay, did the gun jam a lot? Uh, Did I get a misfire or a misfeed? Or, you know, I would try and track that. And then when I'm all done, I would take a picture of the next box and I'd start shooting. So now it's in, it's chronological, it's in order. I have photos of the boxes. And if something terrible happens over and over and over, like a jam every second shot, now you have an indicator to go, okay, my gun doesn't like this brand of ammunition or this type of ammunition. So what are some of those types? Uh, and some, some ammo will shoot dirty and some will shoot clean. Uh, what that means is... Once the powder inside the shell ignites and it expands inside your gun, sometimes that will leave a lot of gunky residue inside your gun and other types of ammo, they burn up a lot better. So a lot of that residue goes away. So some shoots, some will leave a dirty residue in your gun a lot more than others. Uh, Different types of rounds to be used. I want to keep this super simple. For pistols, you have two types. You have your range ammo or your ball ammo. We're going to put those in one group. And you have your your hollow points or your home defense type ammos. That's another group. Keep it super simple. You have one cheap general, generic. You have another one that's used for quote-unquote home defense. One's more expensive. So if you're going to the range to practice, you'll usually use what's called range ammo. But remember, again, your gun might be a little picky, so you might have to adjust that. For rifles, what do we got? Um, surprisingly enough for the, the five, five, six, you actually do have, um, you have the traditional range ammo, you have some of the, uh, the military bulk surplus stuff, and then you have the, um, you'll have some federal agency overrun contract run ammo 
which in some cases is actually hollow point. I have seen some hollow points for sale for some rifle ammo. I've I've never seen seen a need for it. I've never <laughs> understood that. <laughs> um, um, I actually we in our in our rifles here we actually have them loaded with a uh, seventy seven grain Black Hills, which is uh, hollow point ammo. Right, uh, and we're gonna get into grains in just a second too. Uh, let's move yeah. on. So for the most part, rifles you just it you get your common big manufacturer like Remington is a great one to, to get. You know they're reliable. Um, uh, for shotguns, there are different act, different shapes and different organizations of ammo that will go in. Real simple. There's three types. You have your your slug, which is a big chunk of metal that's in the shotgun shell. You have your buckshot, which is uh, like ball bearings or like like marbles that are stuffed into the shell. And then you have your bird shot, which is kind of like a powder. And all three are used for different things. Um, and with that as well, with the shotgun shells, you actually have different length of shell. Like you'll yes. have two yes. inch shell, two and a half, two and three quarter, even up to all the way up to three inch shells. Even I think even larger than that. Um, it's just to make everyone's life easier on the shotgun. Just stick with two three quarter shells. Um, they run in every shotgun. Some shotguns can't run three inch. I have a shotgun that can't. Two and three quarter will feed through everything, and that will actually also affect your um, your ammo capacity as well. Mm-hmm. So great points. Uh, so I said we were going to. So that's just some basics. So for your rundown, for pistols you usually have range ammo and home defense ammo. For your rifle, just get the stuff that's that's your uh, mid range. It's relatively inexpensive it's from a known manufacturer. Um. And for your shotgun, usually we're recommending your, you start with your 12-gauge shotgun, maybe a 20-gauge for something smaller, and you just get what I would recommend for beginning shotgun people, just stick to buckshot until you start learning and experiencing and realizing you have a need for something different. Uh, let's talk about grain weight. So within the same size bullet, size casing, size shell, everything, um, you'll have a different weight of the projectile. So you can have a 9 millimeter, bu- nine millimeter bullet for your pistol in one hand and a different one in, a, in your other hand, both called 9 millimeter, both fit into the gun, both make the gun go bang. They're both fine. One of the bullets will be a little heavier than the other. And again, remember, you're, sometimes guns are picky about what they shoot. So for certain types of gun, you might you might need to track the weight of the ammo because for some reason, if the ammo is maybe too light and there's not a lot of powder pushing that bullet out, sometimes it won't make the gun go fully through each cycle of shooting. So your gun might jam because there's not enough pressure going on. Other guns, sometimes there's too much pressure going on. Thoughts? Um, absolutely. Um, in that case with the too much pressure, the best example I can give to that is 40 cal. The biggest problem there is that it's a high pressure cartridge, so that slide is racking back really fast, and that's been like the number one issue is that it causes slide wear faster than other calibers do. So that's part of the problem that that's not like really a big caliber anymore. Um, in terms of which one's um, the most temperamental, though, um, if you have a twenty-two handgun, uh, expect to, to have a lot of variation and experimentation in terms of that, because there's definitely different types of ammunition that run better in a semi a semi-automatic handgun or even a semi-automatic rifle um some uh some loads are definitely uh, meant for only like a bolt gun and some are meant f- are higher velocity or have more umph behind it so that it can cycle in the action of a semi-automatic um and sometimes it's just more of a um a specialty loading for a specific purpose, like subsonic ammunition is designed for the purpose of being shot in a gun with a suppressor. Yeah. There's a lot of specialty stuff in the gun world. Yeah. And it it can get, it can definitely, definitely get convoluted. Um, So that's just something that you're going to have to, you know, try different loads and see what works best and, you know, trial and error with that. And that goes for for all of them. Okay, so my final overview thoughts are the purpose of these episodes is to get people started and to get them moving and to do it safely uh, and to do it a little bit well-informed, more more informed than the average person. 
I recommend you start with something common. I recommend you start with something reliable. I recommend, of course, that you start something that's not a crazy expensive cost because then it becomes a lot less fun if you're burning through money for no reason. For, well, for most of us anyways. Um, and hopefully this stuff will, will get you started in the right direction. I'm going to post a really, really, really important resource. If you did like this show, you'll probably like the other one. And if you thought, yeah, maybe maybe Pat and his buddy didn't hit the mark today, uh, then definitely try this other resource too. I'm going to put a link in my on my webpage for this podcast, for this article. Uh, that's over on Jack Spierko's podcast. I'm going to just copy paste a link onto my website for his take on this same exact topic. He has a very different voice than me and he goes about it a lot more scientifically and his analogies are really good. Uh, so you'll find cer- certainly some value in that too. Please go listen to that if you're interested in hearing a little bit more about calibers, millimeters, and gauges. Got anything else for the for the audience, Dave? Yeah, just it's you know the big thing when it comes to to the actual ammunition is to just do your research. Um, you know, there's more and more calibers coming out all the time, and there's many uh, guns being designed to shoot many different. Uh, types of ammo so just you know make sure you you know you look into it and uh, if you can you know before you make a purchase if you're able to if you're in an area where you're able to you know rent a gun at a range or you have a friend who has a gun Mm -hmm. um, shoot it first and see if you if you like it Um, you know that way you know you that way you don't you know you're not like me and you go and spend five hundred dollars on your first handgun and then realize that it's uh nowadays it's nothing more than a paperweight yeah mentorship certainly is great if you have a mentor who you you bond well with and who uh, is interested in doing things safely and respectfully and smartly um, if you can find a good mentor like that certainly use it yeah absolutely yeah um yeah, that's that's pretty much it for now. I'm sure that um, I'm sure that with this can of worms open, it's going to lead to a uh, myriad of other discussions that need to be had at some point in the future. Mm-hmm. I love it. Well, thanks so much for joining me tonight, man. Oh, it's my pleasure, and thank you for having me on. My my own my own inspiration and kind of sort of mentor. Awesome. Well, I love it. All right, folks. The easiest way and the free way to support us is a like and a subscribe on your platforms and to share this content with people that you think might also find value in it. If you're struggling, like most people are today with these current events, if you're struggling, do not click on my Patreon. I don't need it that bad, uh, but the show does cost some money. If you're able to, it is a great support to give me maybe $2 a month on a Patreon level. Uh, it's just value for value, kind of like a tip for your waiter. Um, if you find some value in the show, I would appreciate that in return. That would help keep the lights on. This publishing is quite expensive behind the scenes. I want to thank you so much for spending some time with us, and I want to thank our guest again. We will see you guys on the next one.